I'm just boiling about a pound and a half of potatoes in some water, and I'm actually gonna have mashed potatoes some night for dinner, but you know what? I saved some of those mashed potatoes to make what I'm gonna make for you today, pizza with gorgonzola dolce. And to do it, you need to start with boiling those potatoes, and then save most of the potatoes, take a half a cup, and then mash them down until they're very, very soft. And then put them aside, because this is actually going to go into your dough. So the other thing you have to do is save the potato water. I'm going to tell you why. Potato water has a lot of starch. I learned this from Nona Galasso. She always saved the potato water whenever she was going to make pizza. And yeast just loves to feed on potato starch. So you want to save two cups of that water. Make sure it's at, you know, it's not hot. And you see all of that residue of potato going in? That's absolutely wonderful. And then, with it, we want a tablespoon of dry yeast. So yeast goes in, just about a tablespoon. And you let this dissolve, and you've got your dough hook on now because we're going to be making the dough. Then once that's dissolved, you want to add those potatoes. And make sure that they're not hot because you don't want to kill the yeast. So a half a cup of mashed potatoes goes in. And then get that smooth before you start adding anything else. This is the most fabulous pizza and it uses very few ingredients. So I want to get that smooth and then I'm going to start adding my flour and I want just a little bit of olive oil. So now when you do the flour, you want to do a little bit at a time because you don't want to really make too stiff of a dough. I'm going to bring this down now and you can also do this by hand if you don't want to do it in a mixer. So add about a cup and a half of flour. This is going to take about five and a half to six cups. About a teaspoon of yeast and get that going. And I'm only going to add enough flour to give me a ball of dough that's going to kind of wrap itself around that dough hook. Now I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil, about a teaspoon. That gives great flavor and it also gives moistness, as does these potatoes. Now I'm going to add more flour. So you keep going like this until you have a dough, as I say, that you can take out. And this is a dough that you're going to let rise until it's double in size. It looks a little sticky yet, so now I want to add just a little bit more flour. And of course, do this diligently because you don't want to have something that's too stiff. Resist the temptation to add too much flour in the bowl. This is a rather sticky dough, but as it sits around and it rises, it actually comes together beautifully. So once you have it on the board, then flour your hands and start kneading this. And to help you, a nice dough scraper would be very handy. So you keep going like this until you have a nice, smooth ball. And that feels pretty good to me. And now, after about five minutes of that, then you want to put that into a bowl. Here's mine. And I want to give that a little bit of olive oil. So a little olive oil goes in and then the dough, and wipe the dough, with, wipe the dough in the bowl and turn it over, and that's to prevent a crust from forming on top of the dough. Then put a sheet of plastic wrap tightly over the top. That's gonna help keep in the heat and allow the dough to rise nicely. Then, and that's gonna take, oh, about a couple hours. Then when the dough is risen, let me get my risen dough, I've been up early today. It'll look just like this. You see? A lot of people have a fear of dough, and this is just so easy to do. So, again, with floured hands, punch the dough down gently. That's so you can distribute the gluten and air that's in the dough. Take it out, and I think you can see how nice and light and fluffy it is. So with this recipe, you can actually make two pizzas. It is a very versatile dough. Look at how light and fluffy that is. I'm going to cut that up now in half, save the other half for later on because this will make two, as I say. So get out a mattarello, which is what this is, rolling pin in Italian, 
and roll out the dough to fit the size peel that you have. Or if you don't have a, a peel, you're doing this on a pizza pan. Now here's my peel, wooden peel, and it's got a piece of parchment paper over the top. I pick the dough up and put it right on the peel, just like that. So now I take my cheese, which I have already cut up, and it's pretty sticky, it's soft. Gorgonzola dolce is creamy in texture and soft. So you put this all over the top of your pizza dough. Remember, you're making two pizzas, so you want to save half the cheese for the other pizza. Then have very good sun-dried tomatoes ready. You can buy those in your grocery store. Don't get the ones that are packed in salt. Get the ones that are in olive oil, because the ones in salt are just too salty. So that looks great. Here are the sun-dried tomatoes. You see, they come like this. And all we did was cut them up into pieces. So put the tomatoes over, and the combination of the sweet cheese against those sweet tart tomatoes is absolutely wonderful. Cover it with a towel and let it rise for about, oh, 20 or 25 minutes. You set that aside. And if you're doing it on a peel, in the oven, on a stone, you want to make sure that you've preheated the stone at least 25 minutes ahead of time. That stone should be very hot. So here is the one that I did earlier. I'll do the great reveal. Isn't that great? And now it's very simple. If you're doing it like this, just shove it at the back and pull the peel towards you. And that's all there is to it. And we're going to cook that pizza at about 425 degrees until it's nice and crispy.